Well, you can see we were successful at getting my W109 300 SEL out of the shop sitting on that emergency blocking system. It's patiently waiting here for the leveling valves to return, so hopefully we can get it back to its former glory. Glory. If you recall in part three of this series on the 109 suspension, I took the valves, the leveling, the three leveling valves out of this car and shipped them off to my friend Martin uh, to overhaul them. Well, they're currently at Martin's and you can't believe what they're going through. This is an amazing job. This is an amazing man. Uh, he has a tremendous amount of talent. You're going to enjoy meeting him in this video. He's not only a trained German mechanical engineer, but he's also a licensed architect in both Europe and the United States. So I guess you can say that Martin likes to do things right. And when I first met him, it was a number of years ago, he bought a 109 on eBay and he started working on it. And I remember some of the pain he went through, not only dealing with the rust and some of the problems with the engine, but when he got into the air suspension, he just was so frustrated. He would go out, you know, and the pan would, I mean, the car would be sitting down on the pan, and he says, man, this is so discouraging, Kent. What can I do? And I said, well, I don't have a lot of resources uh, to rebuild these valves. And so it took him three years. But he said, I am going to figure out how these work, and I'm going to figure out how to fix them because I'm tired of going out in my garage every day and seeing my poor a 300 SEL sitting down on the oil pan. So he did, it took him three years. He had to source some very unique uh, O-rings. He had to have some special parts machined. And he has assured me, he says, Kent, you make sure you tell your viewers that this is not a DIY job. So in this, in this video, welcome Martin Warminghausen. He's gonna show you what it takes to take one of these leveling valves apart and to overhaul it properly. If you're watching this video, you're maybe familiar with the 109 or 112 or even the 600 Mercedes with the air suspension. This air suspension was designed by Mercedes from uh, the early 60s, from was produced 65 um, onto the early 70s. Um, Kent was sending me his air valves, and uh, I got his air valves, I cleaned it up, and disassembled them. So it's all in this box right now. In this box, it's all cleaned up, and uh, one part I laid down here, so you see how this valve looks, probably from the inside. Well, Kent was asking me to make it really simple. So he gave me a little list what I should talk about. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. First point, where are the common leak points? Second, taking the valve apart. Here it is. Third point, what are the common wear and replacement parts? We're getting there. The new part I had machined, care in putting the valve together, testing for leaks. So this is what I'm going to talk about in this video. I did a little sketch here, if you, if you see this here. This is a sketch where you have the axle of the suspension, we have this suspension. You have the airbag here and the leveling valve on this part. There are the, the air fittings that go right into this valve. We have the lever here that is connected to this part of the suspension. So any movement of the car will respond and move this lever. This lever will basically decide if air is going in, is going out, or if air stays. So, um, here's a little theory. If your car is going down, 
if you find your car sitting on the oil pan in the morning, there must be a leak in what I call the work group. The air suspension I could describe in two groups. One is the support group and the other is the work group. The support group is anything that is beyond beyond what you see here on the sketch. So the support group will be the compressor, will be the air tank, the main valve, all the parts that basically support and control what air is going in and out. Um, air pressure, movement of the car, air temperature, and so on. So I want to concentrate on the work group, what I call the work group. And it's, this is quite simple. In a regular car, you will have a steel spring on the side. This is replaced by an airbag. It's like a ball. It is, it is an air tank and a rubber part that is under pressure, replacing the spring. Um, the work group also consists of this airline, which is tying into number B. Number B means bellow. So any of these yellow marked parts have to be airtight, and if they are not airtight, your car is going down. Now, if we're getting more into, into detail, what is actually happening at this point? And this is the critical part. This is where these, where these valves leak commonly. So let's, let's get over uh, to, this, to this section. So I have exactly the same, the same valve. I grabbed the same valve. This is assembled, this is disassembled. And what you find here on the inside is basically what is called STK, which sits in right into here. Then we have the exhaust valve and we have the intake valve. So which parts are belonging to the work group? It's very clear. STK is belonging to the work group. This has to be airtight. If it's not airtight, your car is going down. The E valve, the A valve is part of it. And the intake valve is part of it. So if any of these three parts leak, your car will go down. Typically, the bellow and the airlines are airtight. If your bellow has a leak, it is very obvious. You will hear it. Um, you will clearly find out. If these valves, if these little valves leak inside, it's pretty hard to figure out. You can spray it while your valve is still in the car, you will find bubbles, but it's sometimes really hard to find out. So um, any of these three valves leaking will bring your car down. If all the parts that are yellow here, part of the, the work group are airtight again. This is E, this is A, and this is the toggle, STK. If any of, any of these yellow parts are leaking, your car goes down. Typically, as I said, this is tight. The problem are these three valves. In fact, the A valve is typically in good shape. There's not a big problem. What creates the problem is mostly a complicated valve. This is the intake valve. There's this little pin. You know, if you press it, it will give uh, access of the intake air. The pressure on this side is higher than on the support group. The pressure is higher than on the work group. So if this toggle um, there comes a little piston into place. If this toggle hits this pin, air will come in. Um, 
But if your car is sitting in the garage, your valve will be in the neutral position, so nothing will really move. But there is a check valve, little check valve in this part that is commonly leaking. And this creates the problem. So typically, when I renovate these valves, I will exchange all three, all three parts. Um, even so, the A valve is typically in good shape. Um, so I have now cut open for you these valves. So maybe I put on the, this lamp so you probably see in better detail. This is a A valve cut open. The interiors are removed, obviously. These, this is the E valve, and this is this, uh, this is the bullet of STK. So now, inside these valves, if Unfortunately, you know, they are flanged. You see this flange here, this flanging connection. In order to replace the rubber parts, the seals inside, you have to open this flanging. That means you destroy this bullet. So you can throw it away. You can save the parts inside, but the bullet itself is trash. So you see here the little parts that are inside these bullets. And uh, let me pick out one of the, the major leak points in the, in the e valve. This is the seat of the check valve. So this is the seat. You will, he you will see here the rubber. This is the common leak point in this check valve and here you see the check valve itself which has a little rubber ring not a problem this is a standard ring so this is a Bosch custom ring leaking 90 percent 90 to 95 percent leaks here um, so now let's let's open SDK this is one I already you see, I have to destroy the flanging here on SDK. If I take that apart, it sits very well. You see here, this is the toggle steel part, which can be saved. And this is the, the bullet itself, it has this seat for the ball. And then there is a custom ring, custom seal ring. Um, this is the leak point. This is it. This is the problem. All right. What I'm doing then in this case, see, let's get over here. Uh, this is, this is SDK. This is E1. This is A1, A2. Unfortunately, there are two versions of the exhaust valve. For each of them, I have uh, specially machined parts. Uh, I reuse the springs, I reuse the seats and the valves, I only exchange the rubber parts, reassemble it, reflange it, and uh, put this valve together. When I saw firsthand what Martin had to do to go through the process of rebuilding one of those valves, I was impressed. I hope you were too. I mean, just the fact that he went about that in such a methodical way, the persistence it took to see it through is quite impressive. Now, you can now see why he emphasized the fact that this is not a DIY job. And remember, it's not over when you get all those little check valves rebuilt. There's still more to do. And in this next part in this video series, Martin will explain what he has to do to go through a testing sequence and also some of the concerns that he has after that's done to get the valve set up properly.